So welcome, everybody. Uh, as always, I'm your host, Gary Winter, estate and trust attorney with Lavex, and welcome back to our Trust 101 series of videos. Uh, this is, uh, I believe, our 16th video. This is the beginning of phase three of trust administration, and our Trust 101 series is for trustees, professional fiduciaries, and beneficiaries of trusts. Uh, after someone has become incapacitated or passed away. And in our series so far, we have completed phase one, which was all about collecting assets, getting installed as a trustee, sending notices, and eventually uh, getting those assets appraised. And then in phase two, we talked about paying bills and potentially liquidating assets and selling those items and what to do uh, when, it, when it comes to paying expenses of trust administration. And now here we are at phase three where we've collected the assets, we've paid off the bills, and now we are ready to distribute. And so this phase three of the Trust 101 series is gonna consist of three videos. And in the first video, we're gonna talk about what is an accounting and do I have to prepare one? That's this video. And then the next video, we're gonna talk about um, how, how do I distribute the property? Uh, if I've got real property or stocks or cash, how, how do I actually give that to people and what to think about there? And then lastly, uh, we're gonna talk about a reserve and a reserve is a small amount of cash that's retained for final expenses. And we'll, we'll talk about how do I use the reserve? So that'll be our final uh, video of phase three and our final video of this Trust 101 series. So. Let's get started with our first video in phase three. What is an accounting and do I have to prepare one? So accountings are uh, kind of a financial story for trust administration. Um, do you need to prepare one? Well, uh, generally trust agreements require you to prepare an accounting. And if they don't, you're required to do one by law. So the answer is probably yes. Um, the only exception to your requirement to prepare an accounting for the beneficiaries is if the beneficiaries were to waive that right. And at the end, we'll talk a little bit about how they can do that. Um, so like I said, accountings are, are sort of the story, the financial story of trust administration. And stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And so the financial story at the beginning of trust administration you may recall we collected assets and we figured out all the assets that were in the trust and all the assets that maybe were not in the trust that needed to come in and we collected them all and kind of corralled it. Sometimes I refer to it as herding sheep. You got to get the sheep and get them into the corral and the corral is the trust and the sheep are the assets. And once we have all those uh, assets in the corral, we get them appraised. We need to assign some value to those assets and that sets, that appraised value sets the beginning value for our trust administration story, for our, for our accounting story. So the uh, date of death value of appraisal, um, the date of death value of a bank account or, um, or a stock or a bond, that starts out our value. And that becomes the, the number or the, the cash value that we as trustees are responsible for during trust administration. Now, the asset values are obviously going to change a little bit, and also we're gonna have some expenses. We're gonna spend some money. We may have some income in the form of rents or business income, and that is the middle of trust administration. So once we establish these assets that we have uh, on hand as of date of death and what, we're, what we've taken custody of as a trustee, we're going to pay some expenses. We're going to receive some income. We're going to sell assets maybe for a gain. If we, if we sell it for more than the appraised value, we're also going to sell assets maybe for a loss if we sell it for less than the appraised value. And so those are gains on sale or losses on sale. And at the end of trust administration, we're going to end up with another number. And those are the assets that we have on hand uh, at, at, as we're ready to distribute. So. Um, assets might change forms. Like for example, a lot of times we sell real property during trust administration and that $200,000 uh, rental house or something, 
may be exchanged for cash. And when it's exchanged for cash, you're going to have brokerage fees, uh, closing costs, and so forth that will come out. And so at, at the end, you, you, you started with a $200,000 asset, you sold it for two hundred and twenty, dollars so you had a gain on sale, and then you've got brokerage fees of ten, dollars and then you've got closing costs of five, and you end up with $205,000 of cash in your trust bank account. So an accounting really helps our beneficiaries see, here's what I started with, here's increases in the form of income, expenses and you know that came out, gains, losses, and then I ended up with assets on hand at the end of the accounting period. And if you do your math right, those numbers should actually balance. So, you know, your credits, which are the fancy accounting term for what you've received in and your charges, which are like the, the debits that, that go out, should balance out. And if, if that gets incredibly confusing for you, then you might want to work with a CPA or a lawyer um, to help you prepare that. So why, why do we do this? Well, other than being required, and accounting is an important process because it helps fulfill your duty as a, a trustee to keep beneficiaries fully informed, or reasonably informed, I should say, of uh, the status of trust administration. And let's talk a little bit about CPAs. Do I need to use a CPA to prepare a formal accounting for my trust? And the answer is it depends. Um, I, I usually talk about several factors. Uh, first of all, is the size and complexity of the trust administration and the transactions and the assets, are, are they really difficult to keep track of? Are there too many or is it too, too messy? Uh, maybe consider using a CPA. Has anything related to the trust been put before the court? Like, did we have a, a petition uh, for some reason to go in front of a judge? And if so, we might need to do a formal accounting because we're in court for some reason. Um, and lastly, are, are beneficiaries getting along? Uh, if, if everybody's happy and we're, we're all you know, getting along together and we're not having any disputes and nobody's objected to anything, then maybe, maybe you don't need a full accounting. But uh, certainly if there are disputes and beneficiaries are arguing about things or maybe nitpicking you know, your actions in terms of sale price or whatever it might be a good idea to get a formal accounting. If, if you prepare a formal accounting, if you think that these factors lend themselves to being more formal rather than less formal, then hire a CPA. And I talked about that a little bit in prior videos, but make sure that you use a CPA that is, a, um, is familiar and experienced with, with trusts and trust accountings and trust income tax returns. Uh, most of them are, but some of them are not. So. Uh, it certainly asks that question. If, if a CPA prepares a full accounting, you can literally provide your uh, documentation in the form of bank statements, receipts, um, and those kinds of things, and, and closing statements for sales, and just give those to the CPA, and they'll prepare the full formal accounting. It'll show all the, all the debits and credits, and the accounts will balance. If the accounts don't balance, then they'll come back to you and, and probably ask for more information. But if you feel like your situation is less formal, maybe it's just you and a sibling, maybe you're both co-trustees and maybe you're both beneficiaries, so there isn't a high risk for, for somebody questioning things or arguing or disputing, then you might be able to do a summary accounting. And a summary accounting is really just an informal short version of the full account. And it, it lists those things that I shared with you earlier. The, the date of death appraised value is the starting value, cumulative uh, income, cumulative expenses, whatever that was, gains on sale, losses on sale, assets on hand, you know, at the end of the account period. And, and you don't give all the detail that goes along with it, all the, the single transactions associated with it. So a summary accounting is, is still important to do as a double check for you to make sure that your accounts balance and that you did uh, you, you did things correctly. And so I would always recommend at least doing a summary accounting and providing that to the beneficiaries. Uh, if you don't prepare a formal accounting, then we typically recommend our trustees get a signed written waiver of an accounting because the beneficiaries are actually entitled to it. So uh, getting them to, to sign off and say, okay, I understand I'm entitled to an accounting. I'm, I'm good with not preparing one. And often they're agreeable to that concept because CPA prepared accountings can be 
you know, a couple thousand dollars, if it, depending on the size of a, a trust administration, might be less for smaller ones. But the, the benefit to, to that beneficiary of not having a full accounting is money is saved. And so they end up netting more money at the end. Once you get signed waivers of an account from your beneficiaries, then just prepare the summary account using your own methods. And that will be the first of three documents that we recommend that you send out to your beneficiaries before you make a distribution. So first is the either the formal accounting or the summary accounting. The second is a trustee's report. And what is a trustee's report? Well, it's the, the text version of the story of trust administration, just like an accounting is the financial story of what happened during trust administration from beginning to end. Uh, the trustee's report is just you kind of saying, hey, this is, this is what happened. Um, you know, what did you do? What, what, what did you sell some assets? Did you um, fix up a, a property? Did you make, spend some money to make repairs before you sold a piece of property? Why did you make that decision? What were your thoughts? Who did you get advice from? Well, from the licensed uh, real estate broker, from the attorney, you know, they recommended that I do these things. Why did you sell it at this time rather than wait? Because, we, you know, the market was better. This is all designed, first of all, to fulfill your duty as a trustee to keep your beneficiaries reasonably informed. But it's also designed to help uh, minimize or mitigate your risk that the beneficiaries will come back and complain and potentially, uh, if they really complain, dispute or object or sue you over decisions that you made. So if you were being a good trustee, then you would get advice from professionals uh, as you sold property and so forth. And then this is your opportunity in the trustee's report just share with them and, and write out, this is what I was doing, this is what I was thinking, here's you know my, my thought process, these are the, the professionals that I relied upon, and this is why I, I did these things. So, um, so that's the trustee's report, literally just an explanation of, of what you did and maybe why. Uh, the third thing is a proposed distribution plan. And this is a way that you can get all of your beneficiaries sort of to sign off about what you're about to do. Uh, we recommend a proposed distribution plan. It's just literally uh, math, you know, showing the numbers so that everybody knows assets on hand and what am I at the end, what, what am I actually gonna get a check for? Um, and part of this is to prevent the problem that comes up. If, if you write checks uh, and you distribute the money or distribute the assets and then somebody complains after the fact, it is very, very difficult, if not impossible, to get those assets back from people. So a proposed distribution plan is a wise uh, method for making sure that everybody's on the same page before I write any checks, before I dole out any assets. I wanna know that all my people are, are on board with this concept. And so a distribution plan, like I said, it starts with the assets on hand. Well, that was the the final accounting value, right? In the accounting, you had uh, date of death, appraisal of the assets, income and expenses, gains and losses, and then you end up with assets on hand. And so that's what I've got right now. And then you want to list any expenses that you, you already know are going to happen. Like there may be several. For example, as a trustee, you may have incurred personal expenses. Maybe you advanced expenses. You've got mileage um, driving your car for trust business purposes, or maybe you personally paid for some stamps or, or for some other things on behalf of the trust. And so you wanna list out your reimbursements and be willing and able to provide receipts for those things. Uh, trustees in California are entitled to take a fee. Uh, and so your fee would be one of these final expenses that would come out. And so you know, we generally recommend our trustees keep a time log of everything that they do and how long it took in their duties as a trustee. Um, you don't have to do that. It's just a good way of providing support documentation and being able to have a methodology for an hourly uh, a rate associated with your fee. Uh, in, in this area, trustees fees for lay persons are generally 40 or $50 an hour. So if you have a couple hundred uh, hours into the trust administration over the course of several months, it can be substantial. Uh, and you want to be able to support that. But uh, from the assets on hand, you've got your reimbursements that come back to you and your trustees fee 
there's going to be some, uh, typically some attorney's fees to, to actually make the distributions, for example, preparing and recording of, of deeds to real property. The recording fees are, are all ascertainable at this time. And so we want to list out all those things from the assets on hand, deductions for all these known expenses at this time. And then the last line item is, is something called a reserve. And uh, reserves have uh, several good purposes. And actually in our final uh, video of this phase three, I'll talk more in detail about the reserve, but reserve is just a hold back cash that you can continue to, to keep in the trust checking account until everything is complete. But once you deduct all of those items from the assets on hand, you're gonna have a, a summary amount distributable. And that you can then divide by the pro rata share of, of what the beneficiaries are entitled to under the trust. So for example, if it's you and your sibling and you're entitled to equal shares uh, of, as beneficiaries of the trust, then you just take the, those net assets distributable and divide it by two. And there you have it. Um, that's your amount that you're gonna distribute and that's your proposed distribution plan. Uh, one final note is that this can get a little bit tricky when one beneficiary receives one asset outright and others don't. And so for example, if beneficiary A is entitled to a third of the trust assets and beneficiary B and C are also entitled to a third or 33.3%, and beneficiary A wants uh, the Dodge truck. And then the Dodge truck is not something we're gonna split three ways. And so we need to allocate uh, to beneficiary A this Dodge truck. Let's say that that is worth $10,000 and that's going to beneficiary A. So there, in the proposed distribution plan, you can credit and show that different assets are going to different beneficiaries. And obviously, if beneficiary A gets a Dodge truck for $10,000 of value, we need to provide $10,000 of value to beneficiary B and C. So they might get $10,000 more in uh, something like cash or some other asset. And so in your proposed distribution plan, you can show the percentages and list the assets that each person is getting and the associated value based on the appraised value. Very handy way of, of getting to a bottom line number so that everybody sees what everybody's getting and there's no secrets. And uh, if that uh, boggles your mind or, or makes you confused, and as it did me actually when I first started doing this kind of work, it was uh, perplexing. But Excel uh, is is a software that's you know very handy to use a spreadsheet, and you can figure it out. And if if you're not a, you know Excel savvy, then I, I strongly recommend that you work with your CPA and maybe have them prepare uh, your accounting or your summary accounting and also prepare your proposed distribution plan based on how you're allocating assets and to whom. Um, so if, uh, if all the beneficiaries agree and nobody objects, then proceed to distribution of the assets. And we'll talk about that in the next video. That is uh, accounting and trustees report and proposed distribution plan. Those are three documents or three sections of one document that we recommend that you should supply to your beneficiaries before you cut any checks and before you distribute any property. Uh, so as always, thank you for watching our Trust 101 series. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, I really encourage you to hit like, hit subscribe so that you get notified of the next video in the series. Uh, post your comments down below. I'm always interested in those. I've gotten some great questions from people and I try to address those in the in the upcoming videos. But this is Gary Winter, I'm your host, and please join us for the next video in phase three of our Trust 101 series.